Ahead on WLOV, Fox News at 9. A busy night of storms leaves behind damage across the area and flooded streets like this intersection near downtown Tupelo. But the threat isn't over yet. Good evening, everyone. I'm Emily Leonard. Let's get right to our news. And we start with weather. Tornado warnings and possible tornado touchdowns have kept the severe weather authority pretty busy this evening and residents on high alert. We go to our chief meteorologist, Matt Lapon, for the very latest. And just within the last couple minutes, a new tornado watch box has been issued for a good chunk of the state of Mississippi. It does include some <laughs> sections of Alabama. Uh, that is this uh, southern watch we show up on our map here in effect until 5 a.m. And we had someone on Facebook Live just a minute ago saying, Why are we have another watch? Here's why. Even though we've had a lot of storms, and a lot of times you turn over the atmosphere, you mix it. All, all storms do is they just mix the atmosphere up, and they do it in a very violent way when we have severe weather. Okay, so we've mixed the atmosphere up quite a bit, but aloft we have a batch of strong winds that are moving over top of us. They're arriving. Remember earlier we said the peak time frame would be between around 7 p.m. and 11. Well, that's because of the timing of that upper level energy. Now that is rotating overhead. So because there's that potential that we could still see some tornado touchdowns even late into the overnight hours, in particular when we start talking south of the Golden Triangle, Meridian, this zone here is where it shifts close to that 5 p.m. time frame, 5 a.m. time frame. That's why this watch has been issued because more tornadoes remain possible. The northern part of this watch still under tornado watch until 11 p.m. and I believe this one that does include much of North Alabama. I got to double check the time there. That would be until midnight. It was 11 p.m. and midnight. The a.m. p.m. I'm getting my flip up there. But the point being that uh, there's still tornado watches. The threat has not completely diminished, though it has diminished for some locations locally in the near term. Let's talk about tornado warnings that we have now for counties. And right now we have them on both sides of the viewing area. This is sort of our lull. Um, we have a tornado warning. This coming out fairly recently. Um, that does include uh, sections of um, Franklin County, Alabama, a rotation that could potentially be a tornado in the development phases at this moment. You go back a little bit, though, and this is the concern we have. Notice how it goes from an hour ago, why would I pay attention to these two storms, to even now, even this late in the evening, then it strengthens and becomes a potential tornado producing thunderstorm. So we still have to watch some of these thunderstorms that look benign at this moment for that ability to strengthen and possibly produce tornadoes at some point in the fairly near future. We have had a confirmation of tornado touchdowns out of this thunderstorm in the past for Lamar County. The reason we were not doing coverage on WLOV a moment ago is because that rotation has broadened somewhat, but there are actually still about three areas, two to three areas where we could argue for rotation along the edge of this thunderstorm near Kingville there, one just east of Vernon along Alabama Highway 18, nearing County Road at 49 there. Rotation, yes, but not tight rotation, not immediately producing a tornado, so still in that if maybe possibly zone, thankfully. So that tornado warning in effect, as we mentioned, for Lamar County, part of our viewing area. I know it's in Alabama. A lot of folks say Alabama's not part of this. We're Mississippi. Well, technically, we have Marion, Franklin, Lamar, and Pickens County in Alabama in our viewing area. Uh, 9.30 p.m., the warning time that that is in effect until certainly we need to be in our tornado safe place if we live in Lamar County there, which is on the lowest floor of a sturdy structure. We show this a lot. We want to make sure it's ingrained to where if that warning comes for you, you get those weather calls, if the sirens go off or the weather radio goes off, that it's just an instinctive, sturdy structure, lowest floor, middle, turn up the volume on your TV, wrap up in blankets, pillows, helmets, just to make sure if you're under one of these warnings, that's what you have to have and stay there until we can give you the all clear. We had some folks on uh, Facebook a few minutes ago that were asking about uh, Kennedy at Millport, and we discussed that it was a little north of there, still a little north of there, though we're still watching uh, the southernmost rotation. Maybe there's enough there, but as this crosses into Fayette County, Alabama, and would make it to Fayette at 16 minutes from now, that will cross in the Birmingham's area, and we hand that over to the folks there. Uh, the western part of the area, as we mentioned, we're kind of on either side of this. Everything in the middle is just heavy rainfall at this moment. Maybe something gets a little more organized in a couple of these. We're not at that moment now. So we can skip over a lot of those at this instant, even though there's still heavy rainfall. There are still flash flood warnings in effect for some spots. And we go out to the western fringe because this thunderstorm, there have been a couple here. Earlier there was one that, uh, that we were watching that was kind of back in the same vicinity, and it's diminished somewhat as it gets near Eupora. We'll track that in more detail here in a second. Um, but this one back before Durant has a tornado warning that's been on it. Uh, 
has capable of producing a tornado. Radar indicated we haven't observed official tornado damage. A lot of good signs on this, but unfortunately, the one bad one is it still has a lot of rotation. And so I'm going to track the whole leading edge of the thunderstorm, not necessarily the rotation itself, uh, because we can't extend it out a little farther. And if this does hold together, let's see if we double check, make sure that angle is the, the one we're supposed to be looking at there. Give me a moment here. And that's about right on that angle. So we're looking at French Camp at 946, where at about 10 o'clock, uh, Ackerman at 1016, Mabin at 1023, and Sturgis at 1032. Uh, what we believe to be rotation that could potentially develop into a tornado as it moves into our area. We'll discuss that in more detail. What has been a weakening um, storm that previously had more circulation on it, this one here near the Stewart community, near Tom Nolan, uh, going back and forth a couple scans here. It has weakened enough. The lightning's down on it. Heavy rainfall, lightning certainly possible out of this. It's moving about 40 to 45 miles per hour. So tracking it at about that speed um, toward the northeast. We'd still talk, obviously, it's raining in Eupora now, but moving in the direction of Mantee, Waddell, Beasley. The time's on your screen, as you can see there, uh, continuing to press toward the north and east. Wind, we'll see if that spikes back up. At this moment, it has not, um, thankfully. And then the rest of this is just heavy rainfall, and that brings into account the next factor we have to address. And there are just a lot of facets to what's going on right now, and that's the fact that we do have some flash flood warnings out there uh, in effect because of the training echoes, the heavy rainfall. I would do the... Um, the form of storm track Doppler radar here, where we talk about rainfall totals, the, the colors are going to be grossly overestimated because there's been some issues with the radar site there in Monroe County. So, well, they're actually a little closer, but you can see 2.24 inches officially at Tupelo Regional Airport of rainfall so far. That's where that flash flood warning comes from. Half an inch in Columbus, a good squat, swath there where the heavy rainfall. There have been, though, some spots, including Starkville, where there just hasn't been much to this point. Outside of our Tupelo Tower Cam right now, we continue to show that heavy rainfall. 64 current temperature. This number has thankfully stayed lower. You want to know why we haven't had big tornadoes, huge tornadoes that set down and go for miles and miles and miles? It's because of that. That dew point did not get quite as high, has not to this point. And there's many indications in the models that it might not get quite as high as it looked like it would earlier. And that hopefully will limit to a certain extent the severity of storms going forward. We'll still have plenty at 11 p.m., less as 3 a.m., and even less as we go towards 7 a.m. Let's look at this on our storm tracker here. And storm tracker is a predictive model, looks toward the future. What it shows, we continue to have a line of thunderstorms. It's mainly that same zone that we've had them before. This is detecting that heavy rainfall we are showing, but the non-severe storms at this moment. What's good about this? is that the last couple runs, what, what this particular model has shown, is we congeal more into a line. We have less of what we call discrete single storms out by themselves. Now there's still a tornado threat in this. And so when we were asking, so why is it that the tornado watch is issued until 5 a.m.? It's because still along this line, not just from, you know, the Golden Triangle, but you go southwest a ways, you know, you still are going to have little notches there where maybe something spins up. And you go to maybe tornadoes for the overnight hours. I think past 11 p.m., we go into that maybe tornado stage. Now it's still possible, and we'll still be watching things. They're here for Starkville, for locations to the south and east, Macon, DeKalb. And we've said Macon's name over and over again today. Owlsville Reform, there could still be... Maybe something that tries to spin up as we look toward around 2 o'clock in the morning or so. Um, you can see it continue to progress out. But after that point, this all starts to progress away from us. And drier air moves in behind the backside of this storm system for a couple of days of cooler temperatures. Tomorrow's highs, much cooler than today, upper 50s and lower 60s. Your hour by hour forecast for tomorrow starts out with 55 in the morning, 58 by noon, 61 as we go toward tomorrow in the afternoon. Drier weather for Thursday, Friday into the extended forecast, trying to show you actually a seven-day forecast for change with more chances for rainfall, possibly thunderstorms in the extended forecast. We will continue coverage if necessary as we continue to monitor a tornado warning for Lamar County, but let's try to get to some of the news of the day. Emily? And Matt, just after 6 tonight, a possible tornado touched down near Aberdeen. WLOV's Tanya Carter joins us now live from Aberdeen with the very latest on what's happening there. Tanya? A trail of destruction. In fact, behind me, you will see where the high winds blew a roof off of this barn. As the storms were rolling through, the high winds and slick roads led to two accidents on the highways. State police say an 18 wheeler jackknife on alternate 45 south. 
just before 7 o'clock tonight, not far from Highway 25 in Aberdeen. And then moments later, the gusty winds blew over in a ditch off of Highway 25 South. Now, MHP says the driver was making. at this time. Again, meanwhile, the winds blew this roof off here in uh, off of Highway 25. Now, one thing we should point out is that there are some down power lines here in Monroe County. In fact, some of those lines are actually live and on the ground. So EMA uh, Director Bunky Goza is telling people to stay off the roads if possible. If you don't have to travel tonight, then please do not do so. He says that the firefighters are actually going around assessing. And obviously having a little bit of difficulty getting our live shots out of Aberdeen, as you can imagine. There is damage all over northeast Mississippi. Fulton also seeing its fair share. The Midway Marina and a local grocery store both sustaining damage. Wayne Herford joins us live from Fulton with more. Thank you very much. I am standing here in Fulton outside of the discount grocery store. This is the outside wall of that building. We were inside a little bit earlier thanks to the owner here. What we saw was a lot of water damage on the floor and all throughout the building. But the biggest thing was the back part of the roof completely blown off. We saw that as well. And uh, just down the way a little bit here is a place called the Twice as Nice Summit. They took on a lot of water damage as well. Uh, at least a dozen right now trying to remove that water. Looks like they'll be here a while. We also saw some can have, you can have there there are some two hundred boats in as you can imagine, it is one of those evenings, so please forgive us. Hang in tight, everyone. Also, just a reminder, if you would like any kind of uh, weather warnings, you can use our WTVA weather call. There is a payment for that service. Just go to WTVA, our sister station's website, WTVA.com slash weather call. All right, when we come back, some consumer confidence. It's pretty high right now. We'll explain why after this. Hey. Surprisingly enough, we're not that heavy. Yeah. Believe it or not. Do we do we want to revisit a tornado warning? I can do this consumer confidence thing. Can you do it in like? Can I do this package? Go to break, and then you guys come back and take that next block before the sports tees. Yeah. Is that okay? What if we took what if we took this block and did consumer after that and then you would have that? How long would it be? Mm, you'd have more time the next block than this one. Okay, basically, okay, can we come back to weather and they will take up this block? They'll have two about two fifteen. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me make sure. Do you want to go straight to weather? You'll Okay, yes, straight to weather. Well, about two minutes and 15 seconds or so for him. And then he's going to do the whole block. And just, and just toss to break, Matt. When do we come back? Here's the question. 38 seconds. Is it possible? Poppy open. Is it possible what? Poppy open. Okay, he wants to be open. I know. Is it possible to hit TVA for a second here since they put out a new tornado warning? If possible, yeah, just just for this block. Okay, here we go.
Hey, meteorologist Matt Lobb on here. We're continuing coverage over on WLOV Fox News of the severe weather this evening. New tornado warning issued for Atala County a few moments ago, uh, and that warning uh, does include the northern parts of Atala County. It is the same thing we've said over and over again on a lot of other thunderstorms where it is the maybes, the possiblies, um, but the rotation certainly has picked up. It has previously had a tornado warning on it back to the west. Uh, this warning does extend um, through most of northern Atala County. It does barely clip uh, Kosciuszko uh, rotation that we get in the French camp in about 34 minutes, where in about 41 minutes, Tolleson and 48 minutes. I'd like it to um, get Ackerman in that track. Let's get that there. There we are. Ackerman in 52 minutes. Uh, tornado at this point developing, capable. Thankfully, at this point, we have not had confirmation of tornado touchdown. Let's check the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar so we can get the exact spot. We're looking just northeast of Durant. Between that and Hesterville, rotation continuing to intensify as it moves northeast. Hesterville, as we mentioned, uh, in one of the exact locations in the track. So let's talk about tornado safety rules. Ackerman, um, or not Ackerman, uh, Itala County has not been in something today. Sturdy structure, lowest floor, middle. Turn up the volume on your TV, wrap up in blankets, pillows, and stay there until we give you the all clear. At least this part of Itala County hasn't. Um, so this uh, continues to strengthen, checking the debris mode on storm track Doppler radar. Uh, no debris on it. It's a good sign there. Hopefully it stays that way. Um, but the latest uh, scans on this, uh, the rotation continues to increase somewhat. Now up closer to 90-odd or greater mile per hour winds on this uh, north of Durant. So this tracking in the direction of uh, French Camp and uh, Ackerman, as we said, a tornado warning uh, that does include those locations. Uh, does not go all the way to French Camp and Ackerman, but just a little bit to the east. In effect, until this evening at, I believe it is uh, 10 p.m., a tornado warning for those locations. Uh, outside of that, we're continuing to watch other showers and thunderstorms. Uh, more updates on WLOV Fox News, and keep it here on TVA and ABC for the best coverage. Okay, we'll come back and we'll do, oh, I need to move that down for some reason. Yeah, okay. Yes, consumer. And then I'm probably, I'll, I'll tease sports. Do you think we're gonna be able to do sports or not? We probably need to come back on. Okay. Can we, I'll can do, we, I'll do this package. I'm gonna say we'll be right back. Just a generic toss to break. And we'll go from there. Could we squeeze the two blocks together at the end? The... We don't have to. We don't have to. Um, yeah, I mean, can. We don't necessarily have to do that. We appreciate all the folks on Facebook for sticking with us. I know this is a lot of crazy back and forth. Can you forth. move the camera back to ah, me? Is that sorry. possible? Oh, okay. No, that's okay. It sounds like Matt has an awful sense. I mean, I can wing it from the sports desk. My Okay. We will do, cons yeah, consumer confidence. Don't worry about the backdrop. I mean, just leave it. Um, we'll do consumer confidence package, and then I will just do a generic toss to break. We'll be right back. No. Well, it's on camera. It should be on camera. That should say, that should be a Otis instead. Oh, no, 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 no. I see what I did. Okay. No, just a generic toss. Everybody in our viewing Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah, after the Otis, I'll just say we'll be right back. Well, I think they may end up covering sports as Jim Holder walks by. I'll be here. I mean, things are still... Okay. And thanks for sticking with us this evening and hanging in there. We appreciate it. In other news today, with Christmas right around the corner, some good news for the economy. Consumer confidence is back up. And how is it so high? Here's Mike Russell with some insight. This is very good news for the economy and for a president-elect who comes from the business sector. Consumer confidence is up. In fact, it's back up to pre-recession levels. And with the holiday shopping season in full swing, retailers have every reason in the world.
to be optimistic. Very optimistic. Uh, this year has been a great year for Barnes Crossing, and uh, back to school was strong, which usually reflects a good holiday season. And after Black Friday and this past weekend, we're right on track to have a great year here. Consumer confidence that translates into that kind of spending at the mall has been rare for nine years. It's now at its highest level since July 2007, five months before the Great Recession began. As a result, more people are coming to the mall, and more retailers are moving in. We've had uh, traffic increases throughout the holiday season so far, as well as retailers reporting really good sales figures. Uh, that's exciting to us. And that is a reflection of what our customers are doing in North Mississippi, traveling up to 90 miles every day to come to the Mall at Barnes Crossing to shop. Meanwhile, job growth has been steady, gas is still cheap, and the number of Americans who say business conditions are generally good has risen beyond expectations. The confidence index has risen to more than 107. Clearly, something good is happening in the economy, and its impact is noticeable here in Tupelo. With numbers and confidence like that and Mississippians hungering for economic growth, chances are the holiday shopping season will be a good one. Now, whether or not it translates beyond into the new year and the next administration remains to be seen. In Tupelo, Mike Russell, WLOV, Fox News. And Snyder says at least five new retailers have moved into the mall. Plus, he says the mall itself has just finished a major remodeling project. All of that, Snyder says, indicates the retail market here is strong and that consumers themselves are highly confident, which is pretty good news. And I think we all need some good news right now. We'll be right back. Oh, we are actually on time. Okay. Yeah. Matt? Okay. Measure from. What are we doing? I need to know. I don't know. Hey, we need to know, Matt. What do you what, want to do? We're, we're going to cut in. Oh, I mean, just on, so, no sports? No sports. Is that okay? That's fine. Are you yeah, okay? I'm sorry. I don't care, sure. <laughs> I don't care. Sorry. <laughs> okay. This block Typical is three Matt fashion, minutes. Blowing up a newscast. It's straight up, Matt, straight probably up. for the rest of the show. Um, I don't know. Are you going to want to toss to break after three minutes? I can. You tell me what you want to do. Okay. And it'll be, you, you, want, you want to conclude with the two of us over there? It doesn't matter. Okay. Hold on. It does ramp up a little. Um, the, the holistic ramps up because as I'll the storm system approaches three. and you get the change in wind direction near the surface, we'll figure it out from there. those things. And this is straight mat on the wall for three minutes. As if we have not seen enough of him today. <laughs> oh, I need water. You need water? After the show, I'll run to my car and get you one. In my car. I'll get it after the show. How dare they serve pizza with no water? <laughs> Three minutes. Hey, Chief Meteorologist Matt Lobhon alongside Joel Young. Tornado warning continues for northern Itala County, a storm that that rotation has picked up a little bit in the last few minutes near Hesterville, Carmack, um, but in particular right at Hesterville near uh, Highway 35, Mississippi Highway 35, east of Possum Neck. Uh, this is the area we're watching. Um, rotation has picked up a little bit on this thunderstorm over the last few minutes here, looking at the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar. Um, it shows the rotation farther back. We're going to have to wait for that update to come down here in just a moment. Let's look from a couple other radar sites here, see if we can advance that a little bit. And that still has that background possum neck just in the last moment here. So let's go back to the precip mode. Well, it's conceivable that maybe it's hanging back there, now fully wrapped up in the precipitation. Yet another reason to not go out and do some storm spotting on this, um, because you're not going to be able to see it if that's the case. And it's conceivable now that we're getting late enough in the evening that we transition to more of these heavy rain producers. Not that they haven't already produced heavy rain, but where you get that um, 
that, that rotation wrapped up in there. So if it's the front end here, which is still possible, we're looking at about one minute to Hesterville, McCool, about 25 minutes. If we track it from the last scan, and the thing about radar is it's always a few minutes old, um, but from the last scan, we're more like three minutes for Hesterville. And McCool, we're looking at about 28 minutes for you. Uh, tornado warning continues for a storm that when we look at the debris mode on storm track Doppler radar, does not show debris. Thankfully, we're looking back here in this possum neck area, if that's where the rotation also is showing up um, on the latest scan there. Um, I don't show any debris in there right at that spot. So at this point, still unconfirmed. But the, the big issue with unconfirmed than that is you're a long ways away from the radar site. We're probably looking a mile, mile and a half up. So it would take a strong tornado to start pushing it that high to begin with. So we're looking way up in the thunderstorm there, and that's the reason why we can't confirm debris, unfortunately, on this. And hopefully it's because it, it doesn't have a tornado that's touched down. Um, but that, that's one of the other factors that goes along with it. There are other um, tornadoes that are back to the southwest. There's another one back toward Vicksburg. So we're not at the end of this. We still got to keep going, unfortunately. And another one back there south of Greenville we're going to have to watch. Um, thankfully, the storms that we have outside of that Itala County storm in specifically the viewing area. It's heavy rainfall for Eupora. It's some lightning with this storm east of Houston and south of Houston. But these have run through an area where we've had storm after storm after storm. And so that's used up some of the fuel that's available for these thunderstorms. Still the strongest winds aloft rolling over top of us. I'm going to go to clear air mode here because one of the things Joel mentioned in the commercial break was the possibility maybe we get on like an outflow boundary which kind of acts like a cold front. We still have some more humid air coming up. At this point I can't necessarily say that for sure so that's a good sign there but northern Itala County this is strengthening uh, near Hesterville tornado that is in the development stages possible not confirmation of touchdown but we need to be in our tornado safe place in northern Itala County. We'll have more after this. Yeah. Sign, it's so bad. It's just, I'm not going to be here tomorrow just because I'm not going to be able to talk. And with, speaking of that, what okay. we probably need to plan to do is rotate. And... I don't know. You said 2859, it's so like a minute coming back? Okay. Hmm. I don't think so. Let me ask him. We have a minute coming back. What would you like to do? Do you want to be over there with me, or do you just want to do all out over? I'm going to come over there with you. Okay. All right, we will be on the um, reporter set, both of us. Ba, ba, ba. <sighs> sure, do you want two minutes? Um, two minutes. No, he's not. Does he need to be? I will, no, I will come over there. He will come over there. Just start on him. Stand by. Chief Meteorologist Matt Lopp on here again. So now a new updated location near the intersection of 35 and I believe that's 440 there and near Hesterville. Rotation on storm track Doppler radar that could be a tornado. And when you see these other little whirly things, these are always going to be a couple minutes old. They're tracking the, the mid-level rotation, which is a little farther north, but right there and right near Hesterville on the latest scan is about where I would put our rotation that could be a tornado in the development phases. Look at the wind mode on storm track Doppler radar, and uh, not as from the specific radar site there. Um, so, so on the lowest floor of a sturdy structure, um, wrap up in blankets and pillows and stay there until we can uh, give you the all clear in the middle part of that lowest floor is where we want to go. Um, a lot of folks asking about a lot of other locations. Joel, pop up that tubular tower cam for me if you would please. Um, and so that showing that there's plenty of rainfall out there. We've had more than two inches of rain that's fallen at Tupelo Regional Airport today. A lot of other spots have seen heavy rainfall. Not a drought buster fully, but this is working in the right direction for that. Um, the, the 62 degree dew point, as we mentioned, we're watching some of that moisture, still trying to return, um, but we do still have tornado watches that continue into the overnight hours for many locations, most locations in the viewing area that we have seen cancellation of the tornado watch for the first two spots. 
northern all, for Alcorn and Tippa counties. It's probably going to start with cancellations northwest and work their way toward the southeast. But I'd say if you live in the Golden Triangle, and particularly if you live southeast of the Natchez Trace Parkway, we're still going to have some more storms this uh, overnight period. We have to watch into the late overnight. So unfortunately, a real late one for you. Not over yet. No. Matt, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us. You have a wonderful evening. Be safe.